Al, it is time to go back to the past to relive the future and games that have died and come back to life. Zombie games, if you will. Yes. <laughs> Hello, welcome to this week's episode of the Season Lamb and Check Up OVA. It's a podcast where we have conversations about video games, anime, and manga. This is episode 216. I'm Jared, joined as always by Doc Al and Ladium. Hello. We got a game to talk about today. Yeah. That left the conscious of video games for a long time. <laughs> for like six years. Yeah. Before returning. It was like, rise from your grave. <laughs> and a pixelated hand popped out of the grave. Nice. We were talking about Scott Pilgrim versus the world, the game. Mm-hmm. A game that I didn't play back when it came out. I think I played a demo of it, maybe. I played it when it way came back out. Then. You played it way back then. And then I think this game is more famous for being the game that just got delisted. Or yep. delisted, not delisted. Uh, for some unknown reason. Yeah. In 2014 and then just this past year, earlier in January, it was re-released, brought back from the dead. Now it's out again for people to play. Yeah, I mean, that that's really like one of the big stories about this game. And I think, I think if it weren't for the whole delisting of it, or delisting, however we want to pronounce that word, um, I don't think that this game would be as popular as it is. It wouldn't have like the reverence for it. It's like. Yeah, it's it's a very weird case where, like, this is a licensed game. Yeah. And if it wasn't for that, like, it would just be one of those XBLA games that came out, and you'd be like, oh, right, that was a thing that that was released. And then it would, it would get a re-release sometime down the line, and people would be like, oh, right, that was a thing. Cool. Now I can mm-hmm. play it on a different console. That's neat. But the, the whole thing about it getting delisted, and then, like, no one ever talking about why it got delisted is made this, like, very weird mystique around the game and Mm -hmm. almost given it more of a cult following than it would have had regardless, if, like, if none of this had ever happened. Yeah. It's a very bizarre situation. I think mostly, in part, is because, like, no one knows why. Right. Like there was and always... I don't think we still know why. Right. That's the weird thing. Like there was always these rumors about like, okay, who, which part of the game development or or licensing is the reason why this isn't a thing. Like a lot of people thought it was because of the uh, the composers on Amanaguchi, and then they came out and were like, no, it's not us. No, not us. <laughs> um. Last year, Brian O'Malley was like coming out and be like, hey, Ubisoft, can we bring out this game again? So I guess it's not him. Which it feels like it points the 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 finger more at Ubisoft, mm-hmm. but here is my thinking of who is behind this the the weird licensing of this game. I have a theory too. I would like to hear your theory. Um, who was it that that did the film Universal? That's why. Yeah, I think it was Universal. I, I was also Universal. going. I that's what I was going to say as well. Like it's probably Universal. <laughs> yeah. Because they are credited in like the opening. You no. Know, credits for this game right we're like because they made the, they were like the really uh distributor of the movie i think right so, so like if they are getting credits on the game itself that leads a possibility that like oh they this was a license that was a limited time thing and you know like most licensed games like they don't really have a shelf life past the console cycle well and the movie also didn't ve- do very well so you know they're probably like well we're done with that. Yeah, exactly. Um, let me look something up here very quickly. But yeah, like it, it, it's just a very weird edge case. Yeah, I mean, there were a lot of moving parts to this game in terms of like licensing. Mm-hmm. And so it was a big question the whole time of like, who, what, why type thing. And this was like, so it gets delisted in December 30th, 2014. Mm-hmm. That is about a year after the fa- after the PS4 and Xbox One come out, mm-hmm. which kind of makes sense of being like, why would we keep this game on this service where most people are now transitioning to the new consoles? Right. And it's like, th- we're not doing backwards compatibility at this time. 
So why would we need this up here anymore? And also, like like I said, it could have been just been a limited licensing where like, when did this game come out? This game came out in August of 2010. It could have been just mm-hmm. the thing where like, we have a four year license on this and that's it. That's yeah. all we are doing it for. Yeah. So like I have my 360 upstairs in the box and mm-hmm. um, like I have the game on my 360 upstairs. This is your PT. I don't have it on my Xbox One because by the time I got the Xbox One, like I couldn't transfer it. Um, but I I do have it on my 360 upstairs. Right. Um. And like, is that what you were looking up? Was was when it uh, got delisted? When it got delisted and how that correlated to like the new consoles coming out? Yeah, that makes sense. Um. And I mean, I just, I was a big fan of the game when it came out, um, partially because I, and you know this, and I guess people who have listened to the Patreon episode know this, like, I was a really big fan of Scott Pilgrim. Like, I loved the graphic novels. Um, I, I liked the movie quite a bit. Um, and, like, they came at me, they're like, here's this beautiful pixel art, here's this amazing soundtrack, have at it. And like, okay, okay. All right. You got the, the like, Super Mario Brothers 2 type intro there of, like, the select a character. <laughs> um, and so, like, I was super duper hype. And I I don't think that I... This is going to be a very sad statement. Are you ready for this? Oh, boy. I don't think I really had friends that I could play it with. Oh, no. <laughs> so I had to play it by myself. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of a bummer. Yeah. Because... Um, even with friends, this game's hard. Yeah. So, so without friends, it's super hard. Yeah. Uh, like you mentioned, we do have a Patreon podcast where we looked at Scott Pilgrim versus the world, the movie, uh, mm-hmm. like what, 10 years after the fact we mm-hmm. did it around the time when the game came out just to see, like, did our opinions change on that or anything? So if you want to listen to that, you can sign up for the Patreon at patreon.com slash SACOVA. It's on there if you want to hear that, but... Yes, this game is difficult for the sake of being difficult. Yeah, it is. And I don't think that's a thing that has aged particularly well about this here video game. Um, Well, I mean, you know about me. Like, mm -hmm. not everybody knows this about me, but I don't like it when games are difficult just to be difficult. I don't like that. Yeah. It's frustrating and it's annoying and it's not good, like, game making. Right. So... Eventually, this game got announced. Like I think in September, one of the, during one of the Ubisoft uh, mm-hmm. directs that they were been that everyone was doing last year. Yeah, it just came like out of nowhere. They were like, "Hey, we're re-releasing this game," and everyone was like, "Oh my, that's amazing! That's really cool! You're putting this thing back out. That's a great thing for game preservation and everything." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, that's a big like even um, before all this. Like I was working on an article which got shelved, but um, I was working on an article, and this was like one of the big examples that I had of like people can't access this game anymore. So how are we going to be able to look at it in the future as like a primary source for video game history? Mm-hmm. Um, that along with um, like uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure HD and uh, like DuckTales and games like that mm-hmm. um, were examples. But like this was the big one and like everybody usually used this game as the example of like, this is the danger of digital distribution Um, this is the, you know, this is very bad for game preservation. It is. Both things are true. And I think, like you said, this was, like, one of the first, very first, like, prominent ones that really kind of, like, took off. Yeah. In that area. Because, like, the the delisting has happened in the past, so, like, often before. Like, this isn't, like, the first time this has ever happened. Right. But, like, this was one of the, like, the big, big prominent ones, and everyone was like, this is weird. This shouldn't be happening. Yeah. But yeah, they put it back out, and they put it out uh, earlier this year in January, and you know I was excited to be able to play it with you because I knew you liked this game a lot. I think I played mm-hmm. it, like I said, I think I played a demo of it way back in the day when it was still up on XBLA, and I was like, this is all right, but I didn't really, I didn't buy it or anything, so mm-hmm. it was one of those things. Um, here's my hot take, hot take about this game, which you're hot not gonna take. be su- hot take about this game, which you're not gonna be surprised about. This game yeah. sucks. <laughs> 
I think that there are good things about it, namely like the pixel art and the soundtrack are super, super good. I would agree and, with that. Um, like one of the funny things about us playing this game um, is that we'll go to a new level. It's like, oh, the name of this song is this. Yeah. <laughs> and um, like I listen to the soundtrack all the time. It's so good. Um, and even like have ringtones on my phone of some of the songs. Like it, it has a fantastic soundtrack. And the the pixel art is beautiful. Like it's so well done. Um, it really captures like the personalities of the characters. Um one of the weird things though is that like somehow they made like boob movement and pixels. I don't know how welcome they did to that. video games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, why are there boob physics in this? Um but I think that those two things are very, very good about this game. I, I would completely agree. I think those things, those are the two things that hold up about this game. Mm-hmm. Gameplay wise, it is f- terrible. Yeah. I but... hated every single second playing this game. Man, you didn't have fun playing with me? Come I on. had fun playing with you. I just did not like playing this game. Like, there's just so, like, there's so much b- they have attached to this game that is yeah. just so unneeded. Like, obviously, it is a. It is an homage to beat 'em ups of the past. Like very specifically, it's a it is a callback to like River City Ransom and games of that ilk. But man, is it not fun to play? Like I don't ha- I don't want to play a beat 'em up where like half the time I'm having to deal with enemies blocking my attacks and me just doing nothing and yeah. just sitting there wasting my f- time. Like, I hated that part of the game. And, and I think that it probably didn't help that we recently played another beat-em-up. Yes, which was obviously a more modern take on the beat-em-up genre. It was genre. a more modern take. Um, and this is a game from 10 years ago. <laughs> right, but, um, like, since we played them so close together, it was like, oh, hey, this is different. <laughs> yeah, beat-em-ups can be good, and this is not good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um... The the blocking, even like the baby level enemies blocking. It's so it's excessive. Lame. Um and uh we even played it on the easiest difficulty. Mm-hmm. And even then it was just like completely brutal in terms of difficulty. I don't and it just made it not I don't I don't want to have to grind in a beat 'em up game. No. Like excessively grind in a way that oh. we kind of had to, in order to make this this game work. Which I don't know if that was mostly because of our character choices, because I played as Knives and she is the DLC character and starts with like terrible offense. I she's played like, as Kim. She's a defense like uh stick and she's just has no offense, so you really have to like level that up. But even then, like it shouldn't be like just over the top, ridiculously stupid to. You shouldn't have to play as Scott easy. to get through the game. Right. That's the big thing. I I understand that people do play as Scott because it is. Look, I don't want to play as an. I don't (laughs) want to play as an either. Um, and and I mean, like he's the default choice, so that's the one that people are normally going to go as. Interestingly enough, not the canon choice though. Um, I don't know if you knew that or not. No. Since we since we didn't actually beat it, but. (laughs) Yeah, I guess that's Um, the thing. We did not beat this game. (laughs) No. Um. But Scott Pilgrim, his route is not the canon route in the game. Because uh, each character has a different ending. Hmm. Um, and so you'll you'll get different endings, which I guess maybe I should look that up while we're talking about this so that I can actually like not sound like a dummy when we're we're talking about these endings that exist. Um but his is not. Uh Ramona's is the canon ending. Hmm. Interesting. Um, but yeah, I really like Kim, um, quite a lot. So I picked her, you picked knives. Um, it was hard. And like, you can make, it's obviously beat em ups are, you know, notorious because back in the arcades, they were, you know, quarter eaters and, mm-hmm. you know, you would have to pump quarters in to just keep beating them and everything. And even when they came to consoles, that was kind of still the idea. But, like, there's a there's a line, obviously, it's a fine balance of being, like, you know, making something difficult for the sake of being difficult and not making it fun. And also making something difficult but keeping it fun. Yeah. And I think this game teeters over towards, like you said, or like we said, the difficult for the sake of being difficult just for no reason. Like, it tries to be this very retro thing of, like, oh, games in the 80s and 90s were hard, so this has to be hard. Which, 
is leave a, that to the hardest difficulty then. Right, but also it's a very weird idea. I mean, not necessarily a weird idea because it, it kind of makes sense in some parts, but in another part, it's a very strange way to present this game because at the end of the day, this is a licensed video game. You are trying right. to promote this to people who like the film. And, like, obviously, a lot of the audience for this film is going to be the nerdy type, the people who are already playing video games, who are already in this ecosystem and everything. Right. But there's also going to be people who come to this film and enjoy it and aren't necessarily in the in that ecosystem. So they'll be like, they'll see that there's a game about it. And be like, oh, that seems interesting. I would want to play that. And then they're going to play this and be like, I can't f beat the first level. What the f*** is this? B yeah. Yeah, and especially because, like, they use the sprites from the game in the movie. Correct. Um, like the one up is Scott's head mm -hmm. from the game and then the very end of the the movie has like Scott beating up the logo or something. I don't remember what he was beating up, but it it's his sprite. Right. Um So like they definitely promo the game in the movie <laughs> in a weird way. Um but yeah Making it completely inaccessible, even on the easiest difficulty, is just not a smart move. No. Um, economically or, like I said, mechanically. Also, I think it's it's like this is a very specific problem for us. Mm -hmm. Um, and I I, th I think it's just emblematic of just the way the game was made for XBLA and PSN yeah. at the time, where if you are playing this via share play, <laughs> yes. And you run out of share play time. The game just thinks you've unplugged your controller and lost it. It doesn't know where the f*** it is. <laughs> yep. And so you have to completely restart the entire game Which every I, time you drop share play. That's a thing I'm not going to hold against the game. I think, like I said, it's just it's a legacy problem from this being a game on older, pro older hardware that did not have to account for things like that. Yeah. So, like... It was a pain in the butt, though. It was a pain in the butt, to be, to be sure. But it was just like one of those weird things that's like... Yeah, I don't think they ever had to accommodate or like think about this. And when they probably did the re-release of this, which granted, you know, September to January is a very quick turnaround to do a yeah. re-release. Um, they probably weren't thinking, man, what what about the people who are playing this via share play? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna accommodate for them, and like I look, I get it. <laughs> That's fair. Um, man, one thing they should have patched though is like. Actual checkpoints. Yeah. Ooh. Because each level has, like, multiple parts to the stage. Mm -hmm. And those um, are even represented on, like, the world map. Right. Like, there's an intro section, then you're going to have, like, the section that leads to the the, the evil X that yeah. you're going to fight. Um, But if you die in the second part, you have to do the whole thing over again. Even though, on the map, they're set up as separate spots on the map mm -hmm. um so the map is supposed to be like super mario world type ish um and like you'll have in the first level you have like the the shopping area and then eventually you'll have the club but like you have to get through all of that in one go in order to access the individual parts of it later and there's no checkpoints mm -hmm. so if you die or say, you know, share play runs out, yep. You're you have boned. to restart the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Or if it glitches and doesn't realize that all the enemies are dead mm -hmm. and lets you move on to the boss, you have to start the thing all over. Yep. Which it did lead to us leveling up some, but it was still extremely annoying. Um, I can't even tell you how many times we did that, um, like, bus sushi restaurant level. Too many. Too, Too many, many times is the, is the number. <laughs> like, the, the Rock Club one was a f several times, but the, the bus one was pretty egregious. Mm -hmm. um, but I... I, I not to mention, like, you know, the final boss area. <sighs> um, so, like, the game... It, it's set up like the movie is, basically. That, uh, you know, you, you start out in the, the suburbs of Toronto type thing. I don't know if you've seen the suburbs. You just start off in Toronto in, like, a snowy 
night and you go through the streets and there's shopping areas and you can pay off Scott's rental fees for some reason. Um, you go to like a, a, a street area, there's like the subspace um, spots you can go in and skip parts of it. Um, and you're headed to the, the first club so that you can do your first gig. Mm-hmm. Um, which is where you fight your your first evil ex. Um, his name's Patel, but I am blanking on his first name. Either way, I don't remember. Um, so you do that, and basically, like the in between segments, you get like story, quote unquote. And usually, it's just like Scott and Ramona smooching, and everybody else looking at them like they're super mad. Yeah, so like this is very much a thing where like you would really need to know the source material to under to to get what's going on here because yeah. the game doesn't really kind of spell that out for you well especially with the multiple endings because like if you beat it as scott and you get his ending you're like what is happening um i pulled it up so that we could have reference of what the endings are i mm. knew what scott's was um but scott's um uh, ramona leaves and he is sad, but then he ends up dating Knives, Kim, and Envy all at the same time and gets a harem. What? Yeah. Who that's thought that Scott's was a good ending. idea? That's Scott's ending, which, like, whoo, there's so much wrong with that. What? Yeah. And so, like, the art you get is, like, Scott sitting on a throne laughing and the girls are all draped over him. Again... Who thought that was a good idea? I don't know, because that's a terrible idea. It's a super terrible idea. And also, like, just keeps up that Scott's an Yeah. Um, so, Kim's ending, which is probably what we would have gotten if we had beaten it. Um, yeah, since most likely. Playing as Kim. Um, so, Kim, like, walks towards Scott, and she's, like, smiling, and he he's kind of freaked out. Um, but then she ends up walking past him and walks off with knives. <laughs> and so they they end up, you know, running off into the sunset holding hands, I guess. All right. Um, so, yeah. That's, that's the ending we would have gotten if we beat it. Um, you have Steven. Um, his is that... Uh, the band played a fantastic show, get a lot of people, it's raining money, signed to a record label. Questionable whether it's actually true. Like, whether or not it was just a dream. Um, Knives' ending is that she jumps into Scott's arms and kisses him. There's confetti, and then it's their wedding day, and she gets married to Scott. And Scott's very confused. Well, that's disappointing. Yeah, Knives deserves better. Um, yeah, the Wallace ending. Uh, he sits atop the throne. He's drinking wine. Uh, there's a crowd cheering. There's confetti. Uh, which, yeah, that's Wallace. The only thing that like would make it more Wallacey is if he had several guys with him. Yeah. Um, that's pretty good uh there's nega scott which we didn't even see nega scott but um i mean we did because we had to fight him i think yes but uh he has he's a character as well right uh he becomes the ruler of the entire universe uh everything's set on fire uh everybody works in the salt mines (laughs) he's he's evil um and then the ramona ending is more of the canonical like everything ending um Scott and Ramona get together. They go through the the door together. So that's like the only ending that's actually a real thing, I guess. They really took liberties with these endings, huh? Yeah, they did. <laughs> um, so it's interesting that you would end up getting different endings based on who you play because there's no indication that that would be the case. <laughs> No, you would think it was just like, oh, this is just a straight up retelling of the story of, you know, the graphic novels or the movie or whatnot. Mm -hmm. 
but um no and especially like i said with scott's being so horrific um and like no indication really that that is not the only indication that you get according to the article i just pulled up was um that the ramona one says congratulations and none of the rest of them do that's a very weird thing so that would be the only way to indicate that it is the canonical ending but But what if you just don't ever play it again you just don't you're not gonna know that like that's not the thing (laughs) yeah yeah that's so like if you go in and you play as scott the first time and you get the ending where he has a harem a harem including envy and kim none of this makes sense no no um Also, like, Scott's a scumbag, and I don't understand why so many women are all over him, but... Yeah. Um, you know, whatever. Uh, Knives is a child, a literal child, so she's forgiven because, you know, she's a child. Um, he is not forgiven because he should not be dating a child. Uh, friggin' Predator. That being said, uh, it's it's very weird, and um, sucks that, like, Knives is ending because them getting married. But, um, yeah, I mean, th- it's just an odd thing to throw in, like, these random endings that don't really make sense and have no real grounding in the material in any way. Like, neither the movie nor the graphic novel. No, like, like the, the Scott ending at first kind of seems like the, the alternate ending for the movie yeah. that they were originally going to do. But then it turns into this, this weird, very weird thing. So, like... I. How do you like look at that and like sign off on that and be like, yes, this is exactly what I want for this character to do? Yeah, like if I were writing the Scott ending, um, if I weren't just gonna make, you know, the same ending for everything because that makes more sense, um, I would have it where Ramona leaves and he's by himself. Yeah, because that makes sense. Mm-hmm. He's a. D- mm-hmm. Um. But I wouldn't make it so that he gets a harem. That's weird. And I mean, I guess like three girls is a little bit too few to call it a harem. But the way that it's presented with him, like on a throne with him draped over him is very harem-ish to me. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I don't I don't know if that was a, a good idea on anybody's part, really. No, it doesn't seem like it. <laughs> like the Steven one's fine. The band got big. They made a lot of money. They got signed. Potentially not even happened. It, it might be a dream. Um and the Wallace one, you know, that's that's valid because Wallace was the best character in the movie. Um but but the rest, I don't know. And um, you know, I guess the Kim one, you know, her her um like special move is that she summons in knives to like smooch her and get like fifteen HP back. Um, so maybe hers is based off of that. Still weird. Yeah. Um, cause I don't, I don't remember like knives and Kim being a thing. No. Like in either the graphic novels or, well, they're definitely not in the movie, but you know, it's been forever since I read the novel. So it might like be a joke at some point in there that I missed, but yeah. Um, kind of odd that that was the choice that they made it's like oh let's just make Kim and Knives get together what Um, I mean if you're already going to go weird with some of these endings I guess you just go full weird um you know same problem there is that Kim is a grown lady and Knives is still a child right um the good part about that is that Scott just gets left in the dust but um yeah uh, we didn't get any of those because you get to like the final area, you do a stage, and then you fight a boss. Mm-hmm. Then you fight another version. Well, of hang the on, boss. you fight a ti- you do a time stage first, and oh, then you fight right. a boss. Right. Um, then we have to do the gooey thing. We had to run through the goo part where like we kept getting obliterated by the goo, mm-hmm. which there's just like stuff falling on like. As you go, like, you have to go across this very tight platform, 
and like there's stuff falling at very specific spots so you have to get past that or else you're just gonna get hit constantly and then you fight another boss you fight another boss and it's like cool final boss nope let's do a whole other stage whole nother stage and then you get to fight another boss and then you get to fight another boss and if you lose to this boss which we did you have to redo all of it mm -hmm. from the very beginning mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is insane like there should have been a checkpoint at some point like between you fighting the two bosses and going to the next like stage area like the futuristic i don't even know what that was um it's not it doesn't make sense canonically with any of the material. It was like a futuristic lab type thing. It's just sci-fi. <laughs> yeah, it's sci-fi. I was like, what is this? Um, but, uh, like, there should have been a checkpoint there, period. Right. Like, some of the other ones were pretty terrible, but, like, that one was the worst offender. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that we had to do a level, two bosses, do another level, and then fight a boss, and there was no type of checkpoint in that at all. It's just insane. Yep. And so, like, once we failed that several times, we just finally were like, nope. You know, it's it's this doesn't have to happen. It just doesn't. It doesn't have to happen. I think it was the most mad I've gotten at a video game in a, in a good while. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell you were mad. Because um, at one point, I just like slammed my fist into my bed just to make sure I didn't hit anything else because I was like just so frustrated. I mean, it was really, really annoying. Mm -hmm. And it's not like we weren't trying. Like, we even went back and got like some of the super defense items and some of the attack items and like did some grinding. And that's not fun. No. And even doing that, we still couldn't do it. It was just incredibly frustrating all around. I think, like, I know when we stopped, we were like, yeah, maybe we'll come back to this at some point. And, like, nah. I don't think either of us have had the desire to go back to it. No, not at all. <laughs> Especially because we started another game, and that one's way more fun. Yes, I, that's also a key key part of that. But like, yeah, like I didn't. We said that, and like, I just have had not thought about this game. Or like, the only time I thought game, about so. it is because you were teasing me about it. Yeah, <laughs> which is just a very, which is a goof thing. But like, yeah, other than that, it's just like mm, I'm good. Um. Yeah, so it's it's really disappointing that uh, after all these years, like it it isn't as good as I remember it being, because I I did genuinely remember liking the game, but um, you know I never actually beat it then either, so maybe I ran into the same issues, especially because I was playing by myself. Yeah, which would would it be even more egregious. <laughs> yeah, oofa doofa, and man. You know I would have been super mad if I beat the game of Scott and I got that harem ending. You know I would have been oh, super yeah. mad. That would have been you would have been you would have been very mad, very upset. Yeah. So that's ugh. What's the name of the the company? Uh, Limited Run Games. They're doing um some physical versions of it. Mm -hmm. I think that that is at least worth bringing up. Yeah, so like there is at least going to be some record of this game, you know, when eventually they probably have to pull it again. Yeah. Because of licensing, but yeah, like it's nice that there's going to be at least some like, hey, there is a physical copy of this video game that, you know, will ensure that it is not lost to time again. Yeah. Or at least now like, you know, there's going to be more people who will have it downloaded and will be able to like and probably be like, hey, I'll have the forefront or the, you know, the the idea to save this and not just forget about it or anything like that. Like, that's also a positive. Um, but, yeah. So I did get it. Um, just because, for one, I had not replayed it at the, that time. Um, but two, uh, you know game history and preservation the whole thing is yeah, a little totally. bit terrifying to me um so i i do have an order of that but the thing that i'm actually excited about 
is that, um, or at least I'm excited about now. I was excited at the time because I was like, yay, I'm getting this too. Woo. Um, but they also are releasing a vinyl OST. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> of the game music. And I'm like, yes, please. I will take that. Um, so that's real exciting. That I will be all about that. I'll be all about that. Um, so I, I did order that and um, will be real, real stoked. Um, does it come with anything special? Let me see. Oh, wow. comes with an LP and a 10-inch vinyl. The art on it is really good. Cool. Uh, it is completely exclusive to limited run games. Yep. <laughs> All profits from the sale of the soundtrack will go directly to Anamata Gucci. Woo. Cool. Um, yeah, I guess it's just, you know, the two vinyls. But um, real hype about that. Mm -hmm. And um, probably more hype about that now than I am the game itself since... You know, the game itself, I'll probably just put on a shelf and never look at again. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll uh, be like, hey, at least I have this in case something happens. In case something happens, you know, you never know. Um, I forget what comes in the version that I got. Oh, uh, ooh, not that one. That's the very expensive one. There was a really, really expensive one that I was like. Which, yeah, of course. I, I can't. Um, it's like $140. I was like, nope. Nope. Um, the version I got has blah, 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 blah. Um, the game, a full color instruction booklet, a reversible cover sheet, a deluxe plastic clamshell case with a reversible cover sheet that looks like a, a, a Genesis box, basically. Oh. Um, sticker sheet featuring art for the game, uh, the physical soundtrack CD, which I'll have the CD and the vinyl, yay. Uh, you know, I have it digitally as well. Uh, Clash of the Demon Head, commemorative concert ticket, and overworld map. That's a lot. That's a lot. Um, so I'll, I'll take that. Uh, I was like, stickers? Yes. Because um, that's who I am as a person. The <laughs> super duper expensive one. Comes with a premium hard shell roadie collector's case. Oh, whoa. Um, featuring working lights and sound. Opening the case turns on the lights and sound music from Monomata Gucci, as well as revealing a pop up scene of Sex Bob, Bob Um That's very excessive. Yeah, contents of the case can be accessed by lifting the concert stage, and then the rest of it is kind of the, the same as the. Uh, oh, no, there's full size wooden drumsticks featuring game art, um, three guitar picks. Um, light, medium, and heavy gauges with sex bomb. Uh, a Scott Pilgrim loading screen and enamel pin. Uh, premium high gloss foil 7 Evil X's trading card set. But uh, I was like, that's kind of cool looking, but at the same time like, very excessive and I would never do anything with that. You would look at it once and be like, this is cool. Yeah. Okay. And then it would, it would just go where yeah. Um, the guitar picks are actually pretty cool. They've got like the the logo, the mm -hmm. drumsticks look more like chopsticks. They're kind of weird looking. It's weird. Um, Kim and Scott rocking out animation frames on the drumsticks hmm. is what it says. Um, and then the trading card set, and then the enamel pin. I do like the pin. That's pretty cool. But um, one hundred forty dollars for a box to play music at me, and it's like. Mm think i'll pass on that that's a lot it's a lot so i will not be getting that version but i will have a physical version of it so you know if anything dire happens in the future whoa i will have some version of it sorry the kitties are just going nuts that's that's the case for you but like yeah it's it's good that like like i think one of the things that people wanted when this thing was announced was like do a physical version yeah don't let this be a situation like what happened last time yeah and like I think Limited Run was like one of like the the first things that, or first people that were like contact about it, and they're like, yeah, let's do this. Yeah, and I think that that's one thing that can be said as a positive about this game is that it really has brought to light a lot of the issues of like game preservation, digital delivery, um, like what what kinds of problems exist because of this. Mm -hmm. 
And, um, you know, you, you wouldn't really think that like Scott Pilgrim versus the world, the game, um, would be the one to like kick off conversations about game preservation and like who keeps that information, um, for like future people to either play or study. Um, but here we are, Mm -hmm. um, Scott Pilgrim was kind of the one that kicked that off and, um, so thanks for that game. Too bad you're really hard and aren't that good. The uh, the art and the soundtrack deserve better gameplay. It's true. I will say, like, even though like we are down on this game, like this game was kind of divisive when it came out originally. Mm-hmm. So like this isn't something new. Like you know, there was people who thought very positively of it, and there were people who thought this game was kind of middling. So. <laughs> Like the original Metacritic review or scores for this game was like a 77 for the PS3 version and a 73 for the 360 version, and then like the complete edition is at like a 79 on Open Critic. So like it's still kind of in that same spot of like you know people. Some people like this game. Some people think this game is just okay at best. Yeah. So. I don't think I could see that. Yeah. Um. I don't think I would have gotten as far into it if I weren't playing it with you this time like i just don't have the patience for games like that anymore that like if i'm not having fun if i'm really frustrated i'm just like you know what life's too short i got other things to do yeah um and i think that that's kind of where we got to at the end is that we're just like you know it is rough the game's not going to treat your time with respect you don't have to treat it with respect yeah there's no reason for us to keep banging our head against the wall here and (laughs) repeatedly trying to uh in hopes of getting an ending that would be very we'd be very confused by yeah yeah that would have been so weird um i I don't know man (laughs) Uh, those endings i can't get over that it's real bad yeah um also wild that ramona just doesn't wear pants at She's all. gotta be cold. Yeah, you're in Toronto in the winter. Come on. Put some pants on. Put some pants Your on. She's got like freeze. hot pants. Um. That being said, we picked two of the best characters in the the entire series. So, yay us. Good job, us. Yay. <sighs> it was disappointing, though. I like like we said earlier. I think this is a game that got a reputation just because it was delisted, yeah. and that's it. That's the only reason people remember this game. Yeah, I mean I it's don't not the only people, reason, but it's. The I don't think people would have reason. had like such a like cult following behind it if if that weren't the case. Mm-hmm. Um, like otherwise, it's like an okay video game based off of a movie. Yeah, it's not like in 2010 they were making good video game adaptations <laughs> or good licensed video games. So, um, like. Why did the licensed video games came out in 2010? I'm curious now. That's a good question. Huh. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, a, we, we had to rethink Scott Pilgrim, the film, um, when we were watching it. And, you know, it. I think that I have much more fond feelings towards the film than I do the game. I would agree with you on that. Uh, like, the film still has problems um, that didn't age very well. Uh, but it was still at least a fun movie to watch. And um, with the game... Yeah, we just got blocked a lot while there was rad music playing around us. We did indeed. I'm looking. Blocking sucks. I'm looking through 2010 video games that could be licensed video games, like such as Star Trek Online. Ooh. A better game than this game. Aliens versus Predator. (laughs) Oh wow. I don't remember if this game was received well at all. I'm gonna guess probably not. Eh, 60s. That's about what I would expect. Y'all can't both fit in that box. They can fit in the box if they want. They can't both fit in the box. What if they tried? I have SpongeBob's you know what, that, boating bash. 
Ooh, SpongeBob's boating bash. The Alice in Wonderland game from the adaptation of the Tim Burton film. Oh, God. For the there DS was... and Wii. Oh, God. Maybe that's better. I don't know. I couldn't tell I don't tell know. You. I mean, like, this was during my time when I worked at, at the store, and I don't remember that game. That's very telling. Yeah. Oh, How to Train Your Dragon. I do remember that game. I didn't play it, but I remember it existing. So, like, there's a lot of prison break the conspiracy. <laughs> oh, my God. Based off of the television show. Oh, my God. Yeah, I guess you're right. 2010, not a shining moment for uh, licensed video games. But, like, again, like, when... Ha like, it's not until, I think, recently that there's been, like, good licensed video games and, like, it's kind of few and far between still. I mean, in the 90s, you had, like, the Disney licensed games, and those were fantastic. But that was only for, like, the first half of the 90s, and then once the PlayStation came out and that era then, of games... Then they just then it trash. went incredibly downhill. And even during the Super Nintendo, you know, the 16-bit era, like, there was still a lot of garbage licensed yeah. video games out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the yeah. Disney Capcom stuff is a very rare exception in the, of the rule. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Toy Story, Toy Story 3, the video game. Oh, man. Which I think is a precursor to, like, Disney Infinity, so, like, maybe that's all right. There's Transformers games? I think I remember these being good. Huh. So there's like better, there was better licensed video games on the market probably than than this game. Like Deadliest Warrior the game. Actually, that game's bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I wonder if uh, the dev team for this ever expected to be compared to Deadliest War. Well, they should. <laughs> they should have. <laughs> Scooby-Doo in the Spooky Swamp, a game that came out on the PlayStation 2. Spooky? In 2010. Wow. <laughs> or Lord of the Rings, Aragorn's Quest, also that came out on the PlayStation 2. Wow. Banner year for licensed video games. Oof. Yikes. I mean, Man. you you clearly want all of these great video games, like Def Jam Rap Star, a good video game. <laughs> Another game I would rather play than this. <laughs> oh. Um, I will just happily listen to the soundtrack when it comes. Yeah, and, that's fair. You know, put put my stickers up, probably as magnets, and I'll be like, "Yay, magnets and music." This is great. How do they work? How do magnets work? So, you know, two very good elements of this game will thrive and survive in my household. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it takes a lot to get us super frustrated and mad, and both of us were at that point. Mm -hmm. Like, not often do we both rage quit something <laughs> <laughs> uh and it, it it really gets to the point where we're like all right if we don't do it this time it, it's done it's done and we didn't and it was done it's done even though we were grossly high level and had like insane stats because we ate all the food we did eat a lot of food a lot of food If only they didn't block all the time. And, you know, checkpoints. I think checkpoints would have really saved this game. Yeah, I think as well. I think that would be a... It would make... I don't think we would be as frustrated about it. Yeah, like... The blocking still sucked. But I think if there were checkpoints, I wouldn't be as just, like... Noped out of it. Yeah. Blah! Blah. Blah. That's what I have to say about that. There you go. <laughs> Blah. Blah. Well, I think that's going to wrap this episode up. Yeah. Blah. Blah. So, if you'd like more from us, go to seasonalamacheckup.com or sac.cool. where you can find past episodes of this podcast and other podcasts like Seasonal Lamb Checkup and Jared Now Watch. You can also find columns and reviews on the site as well. If you want more from Anladium, go to anladium.com. She's got columns and reviews. 
You can follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash anime checkup. You can buy our books, One Shining Moment of Critical Analysis of Love Life Sunshine and Hot Tubs and Pac Man on Amazon.com. And you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash S A C O V A. Buy us a slice of pizza, get access to unedited versions of the podcast, bonus episodes like the Scott Pilgrim film review we mentioned earlier in the episode. You can find all of that at patreon.com slash S A C O V A. Learn about dad rock. You can also learn about some dad rock if you want to stick around there. Woo. And some other stuff that we've done. Hee <laughs> So that's going to, that's, that's it for this week. Mm-hmm. Next week, we might begin our first entry into a new series <gasps> that we have been working our way through. Oh, man. I really want to talk about this. I hope we can beat it in time so we can play about I it. I think we will we'll be able to it. beat it in time so we can talk about it. I hope so, so potentially next week, we will have the first entry into Al Experiences the Yakuza series. So, in its entirety, as opposed to bits and pieces. Yes. So potentially look forward to that. 